Welcome at the E2E Paint Shop. I'm starting with a new cyber painting project on this track's beat concept and the frame belongs to an athlete of the German army, the Bundeswehr, and he wants me to paint the coat of arms of Germany on this frame. And the coat of arms, the symbol of Germany, is the eagle, so I decided to paint a huge eagle and the triangle of this frame together with some more graphic elements in a nice white paint scheme with some more golden accents. I will paint also a small coat of arms on the fork and if you want to know how I do this stay tuned and follow me during the video. But I don't want to talk too much, I just want to play, but before I can start playing I have to remove some smaller parts on this frame, also the old paint job, the Spartacus, and then I can apply my new coat of arms design on this track speed concept. The biggest pain of this paint job is over the removal of the old color and the old paint job and every time I have to do this I think what the fuck it takes hours to do so. I did this by hand as you could see because I can't use any paint stripper, the paint stripper will damage the carbon fiber. So I have to spend a lot of time, some hours to remove all by hand. But I can be sure to get a nice surface that saves me from any trouble during the application of the new primer and the new layers of paint because I start from scratch direct on the carbon fiber and I can be sure that the primer will stick well also all the next layers of color. And that's my motivation to do the removal of the complete old paint job. What do you think? Are you a custom painter? How do you prep your stuff and parts and how long do you need? Leave a comment in the comment section. And if you are not a custom painter, I can tell you only 10% is praying with the spray gun and 90% is such a prep work using any tape to mask areas, to mask all the bearing holes, to prep the design, to prep the parts. And it's not only a fun job, it's a time consuming job and I think it took me a week or more for this paint job, including the video, including all the footage I do for the video to cut the footage, the preparation of the design, the preparation of the masks I used during the custom paint job. I will add some more tape to all the bearing holes. Then I will change to the paint booth and add a nice white primer to the black carbon fiber because my paint job will be white. But at first I will add some more of these circles to the axles because I don't spray these areas where the axles are mounted. And that's what I have to do during the next 10 minutes. Then I can grab a spray gun from my new cupboard loaded with the primer. And I will add some primer. This takes only three to five minutes compared to the prep work, it's nothing. One minute at the paint booth and the next problem appeared. I had to find a solution to mount the fork to the stand and I decided to use a little washer and some tape, a simple and dirty solution so the fork can't slip down this tube. It wobbles a little bit around it, but I think that's good enough to spray on some primer.
Guess what's next? Yes, wet sanding. And guess how long it takes? Yes, hours. What the fuck? But the prep's not over. Before I can start with all the graphic elements, I have to sand down the white primer. I have to lay down the white base coat. And then I can start with the graphics, with the eagle and all the nice stuff of this paint job. I have to mix some white and will use a tray from one of the last paint jobs, but the color is not enough. So I have to mix some more of this tone. It's a kind of off-white and I will mix 150 gram more than I have now to paint the frame and the fork. And these are more components than you think. It's not a only white. There's red and black and yellow in this white. And I have to mix all these colors together. When it's done I have a snow white frame. It needs to dry and then I can start with some nice graphics. Let's talk a little bit about what's in my opinion the cool stuff on this cycle design and that's the eagle. When you think of cycle design you see every time the same stripes and hundreds of logos, stripes, logos, stripes, logos, stripes, logos, every time the same shit. And as a designer I like this artwork, the artistic design very much because no one thinks that's it possible to paint such an animal on a cycle frame on a small tube and that's what I like on this cycle design. I like to show you how I create these graphics. I use a graphic board and a graphic software and it's very similar like painting on a sheet of paper. I have this pen and, and I can choose different layers and also different pens, different brushes as I want. And I like to show you how it works. For this eagle I use a pen tool and if I push hard I get a bigger line and I, when I push soft I get a very small line so I can work very sketchy. You can choose every brush you like and that's how I create the eagle and I use four different layers for every color. That is the first layer, the mid-gray. And I start sketching. Then I can remove some parts with the eraser and I get these graphics, the feathers, the head, the beak, the claws. And when I'm ready, I add another layer for some highlights. It's a light gray kind of shadow on all the feathers. And the last layer, is a kind of shadow layer, a gold shadow layer around the beak and also around the claws. They will be golden as an accent. And that's all about this design. Now I can separate all these layers and I can cut some stencils and that's, that makes it easy to do these stencils because I don't have to transfer from paper in the computer and back. I can paint direct and the software and I can cut out of the software and that makes it very easy. And I decided to paint the eagle invert and what invert painting means is a special painting technique I like to show you direct on the frame. So we have to change to the paint boost but, I've, but at first I will cut the first stencil, the mid gray, apply it on the frame and then I like to show you what invert painting is.
painting. At first we have to talk about normal painting and how masking works. When I like to spray a logo on this frame, I have to mask all the area around the logo and let the letters free from any masking tape. Then I have to spray the logo in the color I like, remove all the masking tape around the letters and I have sprayed a logo on the frame. And inward painting is exactly the opposite of this masking process. What I will do is I will paint the color first, apply all the masking tape, all the graphics I like to have on this frame and respray the frame in white. And when I remove the masking tape, all the graphics appear on the, all the areas where I've sticked on my masking tape. And that is invert painting. And why do I do invert painting? It's only a gut feeling. Sometimes I pray to the Lord and he says do invert painting when you like to succeed with your custom paint job. And sometimes I decide to do normal masking and normal painting. And I can't give any advice what's the best way if you want to do your own custom paint job. So you have to pray to the Lord to decide what's best or what fits best for you and your custom paint job. In this case, I will spray the area where the eagle appears in this mid-gray. I will apply the first masking sheet and then I can respray all the other colors and at last the white on the frame. I decided this night to do the invert painting, but yesterday I painted the complete frame in white and the normal process would be to paint this area in gray first and then paint the complete frame in white. But now I have a white frame, so I have to start with only a gray section. First stencil is done, so let's stick it on the frame. The eagle is on on both sides and I loaded the light gray in my gun and now you can see what it means to paint invert. I will spray the complete area of the eagle in light gray and when I remove the stencil the mid gray appears on all the areas which are covered with the masking tape. Now I have to play a game which can drive you crazy in seconds. I have to stick on hundreds of little chips on the shadow areas. I have to find the right position on the screen and stick them in the right order on the frame. And this can drive you insane. You need a lot of patience. And if you don't have patience, you need a lot of beer or whatever makes you calm to survive this job. And I have hundreds more on these sheets. I have to stick them all and then I can respray the area and the frame in white. Mm -hmm. 